how to load and save data to player preferences, and load data from JSON for the Unity quiz game. So first, let's go to scripts. Let's add a new C Sharp script called player progress. Let's open that up in our code editor. So here we have our player progress class opened up in Visual Studio. Let's paste in the code for player progress. The player progress class will hold the data for the highest score. Now let's go back to Unity. Let's go to the data controller. Then we can add a player progress property called player progress. After don't destroy on load, we want to make a call to load player progress. Let's paste in the load player progress method. This method sets our player progress property to a new player progress object. It checks player prefs for the highest score key. If player prefs has a key highest score, then we'll get the value and set it to our highest score on our player progress object. Now let's paste in the method to save player progress. It simply takes the value that's in player progress highest score and sets it in player prefs with the key of highest score. We need a public method to call save player progress. So let's paste in our code for submit new player score. Submit new player score takes in the new high score of the game, compares that with the current high score, and if it's greater than the current high score, then it sets it to the high score on the player progress object, and then it saves it to player press by calling our private method save player progress. Lastly, we need a public method to access the highest score. So let's paste in our code for get highest player score. So here's our method get highest player score which simply returns the highest score on the player progress object. Now let's save our data controller. Now let's open our game controller class. Next let's add a public text object high score display to display our high score on the end screen. In end round we need to add the following. To save our high score we submit the player's score on the data controller. Then to display our high score on our end screen we need to call the data controller get highest player score method and then call to string on it. Okay, let's head back to Unity. Now we're looking at scenes and our game scene. Let's open up the canvas, go over to our round over panel. Let's check this checkbox so we can view our round over panel. Let's copy our score display, paste it on our round over panel. Now let's drag it down. Let's rename it to high score display. Let's remove the text from it. Let's go to our game controller and let's drag over the high score display onto high score display. All right, let's uncheck this checkbox for round over panel. Click on persistent scene, and now let's run our game. Start the game. We score a zero. We got a score of 10. It's got a score of 20. Now you can see our new high score of 20 below our time and our score. Now if we go through again, click all the wrong answers, we still have a high score of 20. We had zero points that round. Let's close out of the game and let's start the game again. So let's click all the wrong answers. And our high score of 20 still persists through a new game session. Next up, we're going to look at loading game data from JSON. So we need to add a new folder to our assets folder. Call it streaming assets. Right click on streaming assets. Let's create a new C -sharp script. Call it data. Go to Visual Studio. We can just get rid of all the code in here. And then rename it to .json. Now we have an empty JSON file to work with. Now let's go back to Unity. All right, let's go to Scripts. Let's create a new c -sharp script. Let's call it Game Data. Let's open up that script. Let's go into our data controller. Let's copy our round data property. Remove all the code in the class for game data. And paste in our round data property. Then we get rid of everything else and add the serializable annotation to our game data object. This will allow us to load data into all round data and then save data from all round data. Let's go back to the data controller. We're going to change all round data to private. This is because we won't be loading data from the editor anymore. Instead, we'll be loading it from the JSON file. We also need to add the name of our JSON file. So we add a private string property called game data file name and set it equal to the name of our JSON file, data.json. Next, let's add a method to load our JSON data. Let's add a reference to system.io so we can deal with files. Our method is called loadGameData. We can get the location of the file by calling application.streamingassets path, which gets the assets slash streaming assets folder, and then we combined it with the file name, which is data.json. And that'll be our file path. We check if that file exists, if it does not exist, we throw an error. 
If it does exist, we read all the text from that file and save it into a string. And then we take that string and we use json.utility.fromjson and format that string as a game data object. So that will deserialize the data and put it into our game data object called loaded data. And then we can get all round data from the loaded data and set it to our all round data property on the data controller. And now we have data loaded into our project. Now we can call load game data after don't destroy on load. And this will load all the data into our game that we need. Let's add a new script. Call it game data editor. Let's open the script in our code editor. I'm going to paste in the code for the game editor. We need our Unity editor library so we can interact with Unity and its editor. We need to derive our class from editor window so it can be used as a window in our editor. Here's our public game data object so we can access our game data in our editor window. Then we need to add the file path to our data.json file. Then we add the menu item annotation window dash game data editor so we'll show up in the so we'll show up in the windows tab and then we'll drop down and we'll show game data editor we do this on a static void method called init when this menu item is clicked we show a window of type game data editor here we have our on GUI method which will update this class with whatever the user input in the UI so if the game data object in the UI is not null then we serialize this game data object and then we find the property game data on the serialized object we just created and set it to a serialized property and then we can call editor GUI layout dot property field and make fields for our object and then setting this to true will expand the object tree then we call serialized object that apply modified properties to get any changes that the user typed in if there is data to save and the user clicked the save data button then we call our method below save game data also we have a button for loading game data and if the user clicked that then we call our method below load game data here's the load game data method we combine the application path with our path for our JSON file we check if the file exists if it does exist we read in the string and then we deserialize the string into our game data object if the game data object is still null at this point then we create a new game data object and if the file did not exist we create a new game data object here's our save game data method it takes the data in our game data object and then serializes it into a string called data as json we get the path to our json file again and then we write our serialized data to the json file Okay, now we're back in our Unity editor. We go to the Window tab. We go to Game Data Editor. We load our data. Our file is empty, so we did not load any data, but we can expand our object. Okay, now that we've added some data into our window, we can save our data. Click Save Data. We can close our window. If we open our window again, we can click Load Data, and we'll load all the data from our JSON file. We can close out of that. All right, now all our data should be loaded from our JSON file. So let's run the game. Start the game. All our data is being loaded from our JSON file. What color is the sky? Let's call it sky is blue. What is cake made with? Let's say dirt. How many ounces are in a cup? Let's say 400. We still have our high score from before, which was 20. Our score currently 10 did not beat it. We can start the game again. And we're getting all our questions from our JSON file. So what color is the sky? Sky is blue. What is cake made with? Flour. How many ounces are in a cup? Eight ounces. Now we have a new high score from our current score, 30. If we close out, come back into the game, we have the same questions. We can do some wrong answers. And we have our high score of 30 still. And that's about it for loading and saving to player prefs and loading from JSON. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and a comment below. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.